I think it's finally time to review that movie that starts with an H. The one about nuclear weapons. It is the 40th anniversary. It's Holocaust 2000! Um, Andy, I don't think that's the one fans want to see. Don't worry, I got this. Uh, it's time to cross off the hills have eyes. Hello, I'm Andy the Maniacal Cinephile, and welcome to Boots to Reboots. 1977's The Hills Have Eyes was the second feature-length film written and directed by the late great Wes Craven. Incorrect! The second film Wes Craven directed was a porno. Well, technically, yes. The 1975 adult film The Fireworks Woman, which he made to fund The Hills Have Eyes. His porn name was Abe Snake. What? The Hills Have Eyes is about the Carter family who accidentally become stranded on a Nevada bomb range. The Hills are the breeding ground for inbred cannibals and the Carters are the prey. This cult classic starred soon-to-be horror veterans Michael Berryman and Dee Wallace. The Scottish legend of Sawney Bean and his family were an inspiration to Wes Craven. They were a feral clan that captured and ate travelers in the early 1400s. In 2006, The Hills Have Eyes remake marked the first American feature from French filmmaker Alexandra Aja, who has written or directed several films I like. So let's cross another remake off the list and see if it deserves the boot. The remake opens in the New Mexico desert with a radioactive fishing trip that abruptly ends at the hands of the mutant, Pluto. This is for saying I wasn't a planet! What? Four dead bodies attached to a bumper and no novelty truck nuts? We're then transported to Gas Haven. Get it? Gas Haven? Wes Craven? Also, let's not forget the Crave Inn where they have pizza that's to die for. <laughs> Kenny Rogers' Christmas tree. The owner, Jeb, is awoken by a strange noise. You let you, Jupiter, I got the bucks up for you, you hear me? It's like yelling into Octomom's vagina. Jeb then finds a mysterious bag on the porch. I told you it's over! I'm out! You hear me? He yelled the same thing while leaving the dentist. Uh, I'm sorry I can't do this anymore. Wow, I think we just saw an actor quit mid-take. In both versions, Ruby, the good one from the Hill Clan, will trade goods with Fred slash Jeb. Ew, those piercings look infected. We then meet retired cop Bob Carter, played by Buffalo Bill himself. Ah, I didn't recognize him without his wiener tucked in. Don't you know it's illegal to smoke around a gas pump? <laughs> yeah. Like myself, he laughs in the face of the law. Oh no, they're coming for me! Bob and his wife Ethel are traveling from Cleveland to San Diego for their 25th anniversary. 
With them are their teenage children Brenda, who'd rather be anywhere else, and Bobby Carter, who Ruby has taken a liking to. Why are girls always stealing your hoodie? Then there's the oldest daughter Lynn, her whiny husband Doug, sans porn stash, and their baby Catherine. Tell me again why we couldn't fly like normal people. Oh, that's right, they wouldn't let your dad drive the plane. It's true, Big Bob was forcibly removed. I could have taken him on a cruise. Hey, you know what? Stop. I never ask you for anything, okay? Including their baby. Lastly, there's the German Shepherd's beauty and beast. <gasps> Doggos! Oh, but please don't die. Don't worry, good Andy. I'm sure they'll be just fine. Are you lying to me again? No, of course not. In the original, Fred warns the Carters to stay on the highway, but in the remake, Jeb tells them of a shortcut through the hills. In the first movie, the Carters are run off the road by a rabbit, while in the remake... What kind of bunny was that? Ah! Oh my god! Doug and Bob go look for help while the rest of the family stays behind. I think we should pray before you go. Oh, Mom. Thank God no one's watching us. Meanwhile, someone is watching them. No! Could you give me a Twinkie? No. Uh... That's one promotional tie-in that went nowhere. Mainly because they're radioactive. Cut, we got a crew member in the shot. Bobby chases a panicked beauty into the hills, but he isn't alone. Little Red Riding Hood? Bobby eventually finds Beauty's mutilated body. Hey! Frightened, he runs and accidentally knocks himself out. Ruby finds Bobby and protects him from her brother, Goggle. <laughs> I swear, I've seen that guy at the old country buffet. Meanwhile, Doug hits a dead end at a dump located at the bottom of a large crater. Yikes! New Mexico should really order some proactive. In the original, we never see where Doug goes. He just comes back with a bunch of junk. So it was nice to see where it all came from in the remake. Look, I found this place out here. You wouldn't believe it. It's like the Twilight Zone. Rod Serling was there narrating. Six Flags is proud to announce its newest attraction! The Hills Have Eyes, The Ride! Careful, if you take the wrong track, you end up in the Temple of Doom. After walking all day, Bob arrives to an empty gas station. You go that way, I'll go home. Hello? Oh, you'll have to speak up. They're missing an ear. Bob then puts those investigation skills to work. You son of a bitch. Whoa! This has nothing to do with Bobby. Big Bob realizes that Jeb steered them right into a trap. Hey, you tricked me! I trick me. I trick me so hard. Outside, Bob hears murmuring coming from the outhouse. Hey, wait your turn, it's occupied. I'm sorry. Yet he still has the same number of teeth. Daddy. Brenda, is that you? Bob attempts to flee, but is hung up on a single bush. <laughs> I know how that goes. We're then introduced to the Patriarch, Papa Jupiter. Daddy. Ouch! His skin will need more than lotion. In the original, after a failed suicide attempt, Fred reveals that Jupiter was his crazy son that he banished to the hills. This thing she gave me, he weighed 20 pounds and was hairy as a monkey. Was it Danny DeVito? 
Oh, oh great, now you- oh, oh, oh. In the remake, Jeb and Jupiter's relationship is never addressed. Also, one is a murder, and the other a suicide. Later that night, the Carters are startled by an EXPLOSION! We have to save that tree! They all rush from the trailer, except for Brenda and the baby, who aren't alone. <gasps> Ugh. How much you wanna bet, he does not have a profile picture. Outside, they frantically try to save Bob, but to no avail. Alright, who ordered the shish kebab? Meanwhile, it was all a distraction. The trailer is looted by Pluto and his brother Lizard, who replaces the character Mars. That's a pretty good Ozzy Osbourne impression. Uh-oh. It looks like we got a horny lizard. Oh, you gotta be a man to do that. <laughs> Don't worry, Pluto. One day we shall be men. Pillow fight! Ugh, <laughs> oh, come on. This porno has too much plot. After the disgusting rape, <laughs> Lynn returns. <laughs> oh, God. It must be the only time in history the dentist sued the patient for malpractice. Hold on, just have to pose for the poster and... Got it! Lizard holds the baby at gunpoint, and like a bully, steals its lunch. Inform the super mutants, we found the milk of human kindness! Ew. Right? Does she have to do that in public? Apparently, shooting this scene was difficult. Because the baby kept playing with the gun. Big man with that gun! Let me at him! I'll fight ya! I'll rip your face off! And before Lizard can wipe off that milk mustache, Ethel returns to raise the body count. <laughs> Apparently Brenda is a faulty robot! Lizard and Pluto then flee with baby Catherine. <laughs> yes! I'll come back for you. And he never called her again. Alerted by the gunshots, Doug and Bobby return to the trailer and discover the aftermath. What are we What are we going to do if they come back, Doug? We have no more breast milk. Doug then comforts his mother-in-law who's in shock. This trailer is so small, I clean and clean. It's, it's still a mess. Yeah, if you could tidy up real quick, that'd be great. Is Big Bob home? He'll be right back. He's just out getting some barbecue. The lookout Goggle, who replaces the character Mercury, is killed by Beast. <gasps> Voldemort! He will avenge his bitch. I'd like to take a second and say that Beast is probably the most courageous dog in any horror movie since Air Bud. Beast is officially my hero. Hell, in the original sequel, Beast even had his own flashback. What? <laughs> After Ethel's death, the men argue over what to do next until they're startled by voices outside. Lights are off, no one's home! Goggle. Whoa, the girl's locker room! It turns out Beast has returned and gifted our characters with a walkie-talkie. Again, badass. Give me back my little girl, you hear me? Say, mister, can you tell us how to change a diaper? Also, does she have any allergies we should be aware of? I'll be honest, I think we need the number for poison control. Okay, so the Carter family was hit hard. Half of them are dead, and the baby is gone. The trailer attack scene is intense. I think it's time to regroup. Oh. 
In the morning, Doug and Beast head for the mines. Oh, poor little girl was survived by her roller skate. The mine leads to an abandoned nuclear testing village. You can push us! Catherine is being watched by Big Mama, who, like most babysitters, is in the other room watching TV. Was she a great big fat person? As a matter of fact, yeah. Hey, I knew it! The intended audience for Divorce Court are mutants! Yeah, you do not want to disrupt one of Big Mama's shows. <laughs> and like a frat boy on a Sunday morning, Doug wakes up in a sticky place. And to think, hiding next door in a fridge is Indiana Jones. No, no, no. It's a common mistake that people do not label their meat when they place it in the freezer. For instance, did I kill this guy over 12 months ago? When in doubt, throw it out. After breaking out, Doug encounters Big Brain, who is quite the patriot. He has the voice of an angel. That's death. I never leave this place. Do you play World of Warcraft? Big Brain then fills Doug in on the mutant's origin story. The military kicked them out of their homes and they hid in the mines while the bombs were tested. Killing and eating people is part of their revenge for being turned into homeless freaks. Boom. Boom. He's breaking into a Black Eyed Peas song! Gotta get get. What's so funny? <laughs> it's breakfast time! <laughs> well, I do enjoy a fun breakfast myself. <laughs> oh god! It's like when food is ready at John Goodman's house! <laughs> yes! Get him, beast! <laughs> no, you mother hugger! Ring the bell, cause Doug and Pluto get into an all out brawl! Are you okay? Quick, how many of your fingers am I holding up? Maybe Doug is trying to tell Pluto that he has a screw loose. If only the screwdriver were more sonic. Before Pluto can land the death blow, Doug uses vats to defeat the super mutant. <laughs> He was so misunderstood. All Pluto needed was the love of a little fat kid. I love you, Chuck. Oh, I love you, <laughs> That day, a name struck fear into the hearts of mutants. And that name was... Doug. Now, with a taste for blood, Doug surprises one of the mutants outside. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, they're gonna have to change the title to The Hills Have I. Sist is played by special effects master Greg Nicotero, and it's cool that he has a cameo. But on the other hand, I hate this death because Sist is only there to beef up the body count. The original didn't have throwaway hill people. Uh, unless you count Mercury. <laughs> So Doug continues this search for his daughter. All right, nobody move! Mister, would you pay with us? Oh, little girl, why the long face? For the next hour, the three of them had a blast playing pie face. However, there's a catch. You have to supply your own squirty cream. After ordering Lizard to kill Catherine, Big Brain is mauled to death by our hero. <laughs> Oh, he died? I thought that was a love scene. Beast is a good pupper. Lizard prepares to kill Catherine, but has been tricked by Ruby. She turned Catherine into a pig? 
Doug sees Ruby running through the hills with Catherine and follows. Drop it! Show me your hands! However, nothing will get between Lizard and Baby Back Ribs. Is it me or does Lizard look like a less crazy Gary Busey with a wicked cold sore? At first, Doug gets his ass kicked, but with the power of love, Doug bashes a guy's face in. Nice, he just went all straw dogs on their asses. Doug is finally reunited with his daughter. But horror movie! I'm just saying, she could have pushed him. In the original, Ruby turned on her family and lived in the end. Wes Craven also planned for the baby to die, but the cast and crew threatened to walk out. Yeah, the baby had to live. I just remember people walking around all the time going, Kill the baby. You couldn't kill the baby. Kill the baby. So in both versions, the baby lives. Oh, joy. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the trailer, Brenda and Bobby set up a booby trap. Because in the early days, Wes Craven loved booby traps. <laughs> In the original, the kids use their mom's corpse as bait. Why, hello there! You come here often? Meanwhile, in the remake, Jupiter steals her corpse and Bobby follows the trail. It's always traumatizing to see a stranger eat out your mom. Energized, after a quick lunch, Papa Jupiter chases after his dinner. Oh, this Bobby sucks. At least the old Bobby could do backflips. Hey, hey, look out! Oh, you're so <laughs> stupid. Never really came in handy, though. Bobby leads Jupiter to the trailer and sets their trap. <laughs> and just like a cockroach in a nuclear blast, Jupiter survives. <laughs> Before Jupiter expires, Brenda decides to pick his brain. Oh my god, look! Bobby! It's Beast! And Catherine! And Pyro from the X-Men movies! What's left of the Carter family celebrate their victory. But sequel! In the original, Papa Jupiter was very much the leader of the family. He was a large man with a scar down his face from where his father Fred hit him. In the remake's making of featurette, Jupiter was going to have a parasitic twin growing out of his chest, but it was scrapped, so he's the only hill person without any apparent mutation. So my biggest complaint is that Papa Jupiter in the remake is an afterthought, and a minor... Minor character. Minor... Minor minor character. It is New Mexico. Maybe Jupiter was busy attacking a different RV. Jupiter only has two scenes and hardly any dialogue besides... <laughs> the remake's Jupiter needed something like that dinner scene. You come out here and stick your life in my face. <clears throat> I'll eat the heart of your stinking memory. I'll eat the brains of your kids, kids! The things you overhear at a food court. Do you like the peanut butter and jelly sandwich I prepared, Mother? I'm not hungry. I wish you would eat something. I'm not hungry! Mother, I really wish you wouldn't drink your calories. What are you saying, Andrew? There's really no easy way to say this, Mother. You have a drinking problem. I do not! You're drinking now! I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, whatever. Oh, God. You have issues. Come on, I'm not that crazy. Okay, yes or no. Have you worn your mother's underwear? I make it look good! So that was The Hills Have Eyes Remake. Thumbs down, trailer was misleading, not a single hill had eyes.
I'm a fan of Wes Craven, and I think it's a bonus that he produced the remake of his own film. He chose a fine director in Alexandra Aja after seeing his film High Tension. When it comes to the cast, I'm a fan of Dee Wallace and Michael Berryman, and in the remake, Ted Levine, Aaron Stanford, Robert Joy, and Michael Bailey Smith. Many of the original movie's props were made by Robert A. Burns and reused from his previous film, a little something called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In the remake, the effects were done by Greg Nicotero's company, KNB, so of course, they're top-notch. In the original, the Hill Clan was depicted as cannibals, whereas in the remake, the emphasis is on the nuclear testing and fallout that made them mutants. I do like the backstory, I think it's creative, but my main complaint would be the remake's mutants. To me, the original was about the nuclear family versus an actual nuclear family. Two families that are polar opposites. And I stress the word family because in the remake it feels like a family versus a random string of monsters. We never see all of the mutants together and we never see Papa Jupiter act like the patriarch. While I do like Pluto and Lizard in the remake, the original Hill Clan wins because they're more cohesive. Andy watches a lot of Family Feud. The Hills Have Eyes was also one of the few modern remakes to receive a sequel which came out the following year. So does the 2006 remake of The Hills Have Eyes deserve the boot? No. This remake respects the past while being faster, gorier, and more intense. The first half sticks pretty closely to the original, but then it takes a turn in a new direction. I'd consider it one of my favorite remakes so far. Surprisingly, this one is safe. This has been Boots to Reboots. Thanks for watching. And see you next time.